the busy. All right, we're good. Okay, so as I was explaining, why we are starting today with the issue board is engineer responsible for completing the work, which means tracking the changes up to the deployment and production with the new CD workflow. So when we have multiple separate pieces in the same issue, it makes it really hard to do this tracking and to organize the day-to-day -day workflow. Because, for example, what I'm pushing for is that my engineers have that kind of issue boards. This is an issue board with the Kanban style development process uh, per SNE per milestone for, for the group. So they can easily see when they are arriving in the morning what they have to do, what their tasks are. So if there are something in verification, they can go check if this has been deployed and it's working on production. If they can check uh, for stuff in review, if uh, they need to ping uh, uh, maintainers to see how the review is going and something like that in depth, what they are focusing on and, 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 and so on based on the different stages on, on the, of the issues. So if you have one single issue for cross-functional people, you cannot do that. Well, you, why can't you? I mean, like, I guess if, so, if, if you have conditions for when an issue can move from one workflow stage to another, um, I guess like the question is uh, if like you have something in dev, right? And you, you sit there and you know that it's in dev, it has to have UX done before it can move out. And then it has to have, uh, you know, like the engineer do the work that the engineer needs to do. So you have like two people that are working on it. And I just am curious, like, from a task list standpoint, like what is, what's the difference between a sub issue and a task list? Because that can't move forward anyways until like the, the both sides have done their piece of it, you know? This is sub issues can. Like for example, this is a sub issue. The main issue that cannot move to that state until all the sub parts have been reaching that state. This is true. But as we are shipping code independently per function, this is super helpful for each individual to track their own changes. Because this is a responsibility of that particular backend engineer to check that their merge request for backend work is being reviewed in time and merged and deployed and tested and mastered behind a feature flag or something or if it's an API, independently from the front-end work, for example. And then the front-end engineer can do the same thing on their side. But they are still responsible both for the main issue and track the current states. Like for example here, I think, uh, I don't remember where is this, the main issue. The main issue is in open, so it probably should be in dev. But they can see the whole picture, like what's the current state of the overall feature, but what also is the current state of their own subtask. They are only, it's the only one responsible for them. And you, you cannot do that without digging into this, the, the main issue if you are using tax because you cannot have the information from an issueable level. Well, what if you could have that ish, like in, in a higher level? So like right now we, we use the whole view right here for tags, but like if you have two people assigned to an issue and they both have tasks assigned to themselves, and let's say um, you're filtering on this view, if there's some sort of indicator that the person, who, whoever is this view it belongs to, they have a task that they still have to complete on that issue. Yeah. Just and like as a visual indicator, you know? This is what part of my, my answer that <laughs> You cannot have read so far, but main of the limitation that we have today, if you can put that in an issue, I'm perfectly fine dealing with just one issue and it will be easier, simpler. This sub issue convention is just a work around the fact that we need more per assignee feature on an issue, like the issue weights, uh, the, the workflow tracking. So if the, if the workflow tracking is a, a native property instead of available, that's fine. Like if you have per ICME issue weight, that's fine because the reason we want also uh, issue weight, uh, a separate issue to have separate issue weights is because building such ICME boards, I can quickly have um, a good grasp of my, uh, my team uh, members' capacity for a given release. So we are not using the issue weight currently in my group, this is upcoming. But you can see that for each column, I have the, the total work for a given assignee, and I can see the weight. So it's easy for me when we get more predictability about the, the, the velocity of the team, that if this person is away for two weeks during the iteration, the weight should not be that much. And this is super helpful for, for the engineering manager to, to be faster when doing the scheduling of the next iteration. That, that makes a lot of sense. And I, like as a product manager, I've had to 
work with other teams where I'm the one who's responsible for resource allocation and making sure that we have the right capacity for what we're planning and committing to. So like, I kind of understand that problem. I think the thing that I wanted to try to solve from a more purity standpoint is a sub issue convention adds a whole lot more workload and issue management instead of so like it, it solves the problem, but it doesn't solve it as effectively as like maybe uh, some of the stuff we talked about, like if there are subtasks and you can roll up, you know, all the issue weights, you know, per assignee uh, across all the issues that they have, you know, and just count those or look across, you know, I think there's different ways to potentially solve it that require fewer artifacts, if that makes sense. And that's what I want to explore together. Again, I'm totally agreeing with you. Is that just, it's just that during the past months and with all the load that all of the teams have at GitLab, I see the sub issue MVC to be a more reachable goal than having all those features natively supported in, in a single issue. And the reason I'm pushing for this is with the upcoming feature of negative filters, you can get rid of that cluttering of having more issues because you say you have more issues to manage. Yes, this is true. Globally, there are more issues, but this is still per individual issues. So instead of having one issue being maintained by two people, they have their own issue to maintain. And yes, it's true. The main issue is uh, a shared responsibility because we still want to have cross-functional people uh, working together and being together responsible for the, the value to be shipped uh, for, the, for the customer. But uh, to, be, to, go, to go back to what I was saying, um, if I'm looking at uh, what I would call a product manager board, oops, sorry, this is still on the link. So a product manager board will more look like that. Maybe you're using that kind of board you too to know what are the deliverables, the stretch item that have been open or closed during the milestone and see the progress and to, for example, what are the features that are closed that I can announce in my monthly uh, release blog post? You could just add a filter, like a negative filter to remove sub-issues, and you would have a clean view about what are the, the issues that are about shipping value to the users and nothing about technical implementation details. So these are still less than ideal with, uh, versus what you're suggesting, but this is to me uh, an easier goal to reach because all of those pieces are coming soon in GitLab. See what I mean? Yeah, you just won't be able to go backwards. If we do the sub-issue thing, we can't like deprecate sub-issues and then they become like a permanent solution, even if they're not the ideal solution, if that makes sense. Um, and I, I think it's like worth considering, but then like there's a lot of other things that I'm thinking through too of like, we're we're over the, pro, the the application's overly reliant on filters right now to solve workflow problems, and I don't want to keep solving them with more filters. I'd rather step back and look at the underlying problems and fix to fix those, because we can spend a bunch of engineering resources on or or not or like improving the filters, or we can spend engineering resources and design resources on solving things in a more pure way. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, and to be, yeah. And to be honest. I, I don't think actually, I mean, if we are reaching, using that convention and once we have the, the negative filters, I don't think we need the native sub-issue functionality because today what we are doing is, I'd say, good enough for us. It, may, it, it needs a bit more uh, manual work, like we are expliciting the sub-issues in that part, which is an implementation plan. So it's, you can have what we could have as child issues here. You have, we have this here in the description. And this is good enough for us today. So if you want to get rid of that child issue, sub issues, feature, native feature, like we have related issue here, for example, and instead focus on the, the deeper problem with native solution, I'm fine with that. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna, put this through the validate some validation cycles and kind of do a little bit more exploratory research. Um, the other reason why I'm kind of, you know, interested in 
the better solution in the long run is because eventually we're going to want to redo like the to-do list, you know, the individual to-do list. And we can either solve that by showing a bunch of issues or we can work in the concept of tasks as like kind of a more first class citizen across issues and across things so that you can track your tasks in one place. Um, so, you know, your engineer, when it comes to down the morning, they don't go look at a board, they just go look at their, their, their individual task list or to-do list up in the top right, you know? Um, I think ultimately that's where I would like to get to just because I want to tailor the experience and not force people to go through, you know, a bunch of filters to a specific board, but just to go like, here's the work I have to do today. I'm going to sit down and see it right away. And I think, you know, the open issues is great, but kind of trying to mirror the function of uh, the issue boards and taking some of that in on a task level for the individual. So that's just some of the bigger picture and pieces that I'm thinking about um, as we're exploring this together. Yeah, I really like that. I mean, I was a, a former user of Jira and it makes things way easier to manage. Let's be honest, I, I like that. And, you know, we already, like, for example, in this issue list, we already have a, a summary of the tasks. So if you could have something similar bubbling up at the issue board level, uh, is this could be achievable uh, instead of using sub issue. So I really like that approach. Cool. This has been really helpful. I'm going to go write up some notes from this. And um, if you want me to post this video to uh, our unfiltered channel on YouTube or. Yeah, sure. Cool. Um,